Hey, what's up everyone? So, uh, this video, we're gonna do a very interesting unboxing and maybe first impression of uh, my early Thanksgiving gift for myself I uh, just got from Amazon, which is the Juring Crane M2 and uh, it's a uh, compact camera and cell phone stabilizer uh, that I just uh, ordered last week and it arrived to me uh, fairly quickly so I'll post the link down below if you guys are also interested in a similar gimbal or stabilizer for your compact camera or smartphone and without further ado let's open up the packaging and check out the actual stabilizer itself so It's, uh, it's not cheap, but again, it's also not super expensive. Um, I think I bought it for $269. And this thing has just came out uh, a few a few months ago, or maybe even last month. Uh, opening up the packaging, you have a little, very nice uh, little carrying box over here. And a uh, little user's manual right here. Uh, so the quick start guide includes a lot of information on how to just quickly set up the camera, do the balance um, for different uh, for the mirrorless compact cameras and uh, also like for smartphones because those are the two main thing that this gimbal is advertised towards. Now unfortunately I do not have a compact camera that's light enough uh, to be able to be used with the crane M2 so I'm mainly gonna just be using this for my cell phone and uh, um, so this is the box for the stabilizer I'm gonna show you my DJI Run S box which is coming here uh, it's not even gonna fit the whole frame but this is the DJI Run and S box and this is the little you can see the size difference it's uh, it's pretty significant okay um, but yeah uh, that's how compact this little gimbal is so if you're not using a, a bigger setup or a bigger rig this is most definitely is backpackable so you can use it and just pack it in your any kind of backpack really easily so let me figure out how to open this first um, right here okay um, the box doesn't come with a latch, so it actually just locks itself over here. Uh, the DJI Run and S box does come with a latch, so it's not gonna open by accident. And you can see how tiny and compact this gimbal is. It's really, really small. Um, wow. Um, and first impression when you are holding it, it's it feels pretty sturdy. It feels solid and well made. The entire top part, besides the grip. Is actually made of um, metal so it's aluminum it looks like and uh, let's see and it's pretty loose so also it looks like it's got a lock for all the access so you can really nicely just lock it and for transportation purpose like all the access is lockable that's the first thing I noticed about uh, or the first thing I noticed about this gimbal which is like it's very easy to lock so and then there's a little pin under so once you put that pin in position you can actually lock everything and tighten everything so it doesn't move around like my Ronin S it's it's like it just dangles around when you actually um, take off the camera which is uh, definitely not good and I know the newest Ronin SC also features the full lock feature but again to me it's it's a really convenient feature to have but it's really not necessary in terms of what the gimbal can do for you okay so that's the first thing I noticed about this gimbal compared to my Ronin S and uh, so let's take it out put it over here and uh, so what are the things are in box in the box is uh, looks like the quick release plate kind of hard to take out everything this is the quick release plate and it's uh, constructed of aluminum cast aluminum which is really nice feels really good also, the cell phone holder constructed of 100% aluminum, uh, very hefty. You have the USB-C charging cable. You have a little nice grip, uh, not grip, but the uh, the strap um, 
for you to uh, hold like a hand strap uh, when you want to just always carry this little gimbal in your hand. Uh, I'm probably not going to use that. Here's a little quarter inch thumb screw for securing the, I believe, the camera, the mirrorless compact cameras. And here is the little tiny tripod stand where you can actually leave the gimbal on the table really nicely over here. So very tiny, very compact. Um, so I'm gonna put the box away and we're gonna just take a detailed look on the gimbal itself. But really first impression, um, feels very well made. Okay, and uh, it locks into place, so really, really easy and small for compact, uh, you know, carrying and storage. And so I am going to unlock everything and put it on the little provided tripod. Okay, like so. And just take a quick look. It's, it's very simple, actually. There's really not much parts to it. And obviously all the cables needed to connect to mirrorless cameras are not included. I repeat, they are not included. So you have to buy those cables for your specific camera if you want to use the on-camera controls uh, for the mirrorless cameras, okay? So unlock all the access. And so now the camera is, is gonna be dangling around everywhere, I believe. Interestingly, uh, while I was uh, turning off the camera and trying to balance the gimbal, the Crane M2, uh, I have actually found a few things that I think is note worthy uh, for you guys to know, especially if you're using a large cell phone, okay? So the adapter they have included, it's all metal, well, very well constructed. However, when I try to mount my Note 9, which is a very big cell phone, onto the gimbal uh, with, you know, the uh, with the hole aligned very nicely to the plate, it just wouldn't balance. Um, so the camera would go this way all the time. So the solution, of course, because it have two holes on the bottom, is to use the shadow hole. However, the problem is with the shadow hole and the included thumb screw, if you screw it in here on the shadow hole, it actually pushes the little rubber seal on the um, on the cell phone adapter, so it's, uh, actually damaged the rubber seal on there and then pushed into my phone, which actually made the bottom part looks really funky uh, when I was trying to balance the gimbal. And uh, because the only way to balance my phone, which is a big phone, is to have the adapter protruding out of the plate over here. Otherwise, it just never wouldn't balance properly. So, I actually just disregarded, I discarded the thumb screw included and I used my a little sh hot shoe adapter that I had laying around with a little, uh, I guess, locking washer on the hot shoe adapter. With this one, it's also using a quarter inch, you know, screw. So, I can actually use the shallow hole on the bottom of the cell phone adapter and then just have the... Um, have the camera protruding out just very slightly so I I'm able to let's see so I'm able to finally balance the cell phone um, on this little gimbal so as you can see right here is tilting forward which is actually good because that means I have more room to play by pushing it back just a little bit so it's not protruding out as much. So this is already a pretty good balance because it's not like dropping down like that quick. It's dropping down slowly, so it's kind of balanced. And of course, I have balanced the rest of the areas, the axis. So now the gimbal is actually ready to be used. And uh, while away, I also updated the firmware to the newest 2.01. So basically, I have it balanced. I have the firmware updated. It's pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna turn on the gimbal. And now it's turned on. So the default mode is PF, which is pan follow. So in the PF mode, the lens keeps pointing forward regardless of your movement. 
I mean uh, like up and down so if you tilt your camera like this way the lens still pointing forward that's pan follow uh, the pan means if you pan your camera it actually turns with with your panning action so that's pan follow which is also the most common used mode uh, that I mean actually, actually I use this mode a lot so by default they are they're defaulting it to pan follow okay if I press the mode button on the back and the next mode is actually the lock mode so as you can see the phone actually locked to the axis it doesn't really move around regardless of where you move the phone so that's the second mode by default in the mode button and if I press to the third mode it's POV uh, point of view mode so in this mode wherever you're pointing the phone is gonna point as well and it's gonna do it in a very quick motion so wherever you point the phone follows okay so that's POV mode um, and if I press again it goes back to pan follow which you know only pans and it doesn't rotate along the, the tilt axis okay and uh, so that's all the three basic modes there is and in the front you also have a trigger button so in the pen follow mode if you press the trigger button it actually goes into follow mode which is similar mode as POV but you can actually um, oh, wait what did I press I think I pressed a sleep button now it seems like the sleep mode um, I need to uh, <laughs> I need to bring it back to normal mode which I don't even know how um, so to go out of the sleep mode I have to press the lock button again and then press the mode button on the back and now it exit the sleep mode so what I want to show you is if I press the front it goes into follow mode which is similar as the point of view it just follows you around and if you lose it it goes back to pan follow and uh, if I press the front button three times it goes into uh, like a selfie mode so in that mode uh, the phone just rotates around and then you can do a quick like uh, uh, I guess introduction while you finish the introduction you press it three times it goes into whatever you are photographing so that's the quick selfie mode um, and uh, so pressing twice of the front button the phone actually resets to the center so if I'm like if I'm over here in let's just try this so basically if if I'm actually like rotating it up and down and I press twice I just go back to the center okay so that's the centering mode um, by pressing it twice also there's a manual on the side if you press the manual button it goes into a quick manual uh, display uh, and you can change some of the basic settings in the OLED like really quickly so there's really not much of the setting to change in the manual mode but you can check out the um, you can change the motors uh, sensitivity uh, and have three sensitivity modes there's low mode medium and high and uh, there's a Wi-Fi display settings so nothing has been configured in the Wi-Fi setting there is a history I don't really know what the history is for and there's joystick so in the joystick mode you can change the direction of the joystick by reversing it so basically if you press the up the joystick by default goes up but if you are in the reverse mode uh, for the uh, for the uh, the vertical um, tilt you can change it so if you press the up on the joystick the joystick actually the tilt actually goes down so that's a reverse mode some people likes to use the reverse mode on some of the axis and uh, you can easily change that in the settings over here in the manual okay uh, all in all this is a very simple very quick and easy to use gimbal once you pass that initial balancing part so once you have the thing balanced it's uh, it's really easy simple to use okay and uh, so if you also turn on your phone you can adjust some more of the parameters 
of the of the gimbal, such as the movement speed of the panning and the tilting action, and also you have function of um, like you have a kind of a small suite uh, to record um, videos directly in the Jiring app. Like uh, so, you can take pictures, you can record, you can do some uh, time lapse, you can do a panorama panorama recording mode. So really, uh, you have a full featured uh, like a suite in the Jiring app as well. Uh, in the next section of the video, I think we already go through all the basics of you know this little um, stabilizer. So next section, I'm just gonna make some videos for you guys to see and judge to see whether you know the Jiring Crank M2 is doing its job or not. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a small enough mirrorless camera to test, so I'm mainly just going to be using my phone um, to record the, the sample footages. Uh, we're going to come back and then review the footage and then I'm going to give you a final conclusion whether this little gimbal is worth the money. Okay, So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next section.
So a couple of things that I think could have improved next time or in the future product for drilling is the design of the buttons. Actually, I would much prefer to have eliminated the OLED um, LED right over here or actually put the OLED LED on the bottom part and move the buttons up. That way, if I'm holding the if I'm holding the gimbal, I wouldn't be accidentally hitting the buttons all the time. And uh, it would be a much, much logical design. And also, um, I think the, the Jiring app could have improved a little bit um, because I think compared to the DJI app, they are still lacking in terms of the intuitive setup um, and also the calibration uh, of the gimbal because um, the calibration for this gimbal is actually quite complicated. It requires a six step calibration that you have to align very well of the gimbal exactly as shown in the picture and put it on the table and it takes six steps. So also the default, um, the, when, when I set up my smartphone on the gimbal uh, and turn on the gimbal, it's actually tilted. So I have to do a manual calibration to get the tilt correct on the gimbal. Uh, before I'm able to use this. So right now it's calibrated so it's perfect and then ready to shoot. Uh, but when you first get the gimbal, uh, you're gonna run into some issues with slight tilt without any calibration. So take that into consideration as well. And other than that, it's a very good gimbal to have if you have a small compact mirrorless camera or, and it works excellent for any smartphone, like any smartphone really. Uh, just grab and go and if you do some action shoots, it's also great for some creative angle shooting Like you can get the angle really low and especially if you're in a motion uh, It gets some really nice creative uh, footages. So Excellent gimbal to have excellent backup gimbal to have uh, But for serious video production uh, You are probably looking at some gimbal that are much larger that can accommodate your camera setup. It's 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 all about the weight of the camera that the gimbal can support. And of course, as you go more professional, the weight of the camera increases, so is the size of the gimbal. Uh, you have look at the, the box for my Ronin S, it's like almost four times as big as the box for my um, Crane M2. So take that into consideration as well. It's all about finding the perfect gimbal for the perfect setup, okay? If you guys have any questions about this, Gimbal in particular, the Crane M2. Feel free to ask me in the comments section down below. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do uh, hit the thumbs up button and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much and uh, take care.